Algebra 1, 10.12b, Rational Expression Word Problem for Addition and the Rhine Papyrus. Take a look at this. This is a small portion of the Rhine Papyrus. It's also called the Rhine Mathematical Papyrus. If you look really carefully, you can see geometry in there. You see the angles, the triangles? Papyrus is a plant. It can also be a thick type of paper. It's called papyrus paper. And it's made from the papyrus plant, and it could be a document written on these thick sheets of papyrus joined side by side and rolled up into a scroll. It's an early form of a book. They were used in ancient Egypt and in the Mediterranean. The rind papyrus is over five meters long and dates back to 1560 BC. That's 1,560 years before Christ. It was named after Alexander Rind, who bought it in 1858 in Egypt and it contains arithmetic, algebra, geometry, and other stuff. The majority of this papyrus is in the British Museum. Now, you can find out more about the Rhine Mathematical Papyrus by looking it up on Wikipedia. It actually has a pretty extensive story there, and it talks about how this was actually stolen out of Egypt illegally. Well, one of the problems that appears in the Rhine Papyrus is if a certain number two-thirds of it, half of it, and a seventh of it are added together, the result is 97. What is the number? So we can see that right away that we need to add them, right? And if we let x equal that certain number, we can write an equation that fits. So we've got a certain number x plus two-thirds of x plus a half of x plus one-seventh of x, and the result is 97, so it equals 97. We need to find the least common multiple for the 3, the 2, and the 7, the denominator, right? The lowest common denominator, so that we can add them. That's how we add fractions. So the lowest common multiple for 3, 2, and 7 is a 42, so that's going to be our least common denominator. So now what we need to do is, whatever we multiply this 3, this 2, or this 7 by to get to a 42, that's what we need to multiply the numerator by. So for 2 thirds, we multiply both by 14 and we get 28 over 42. For a half, we have to multiply it by 21. So the numerator and denominator get multiplied by 21 to get 21 over 42. And 7 needs to be multiplied by 6 to get to 42, so we have 6 over 42. Now we can add the numerators. And when we add 28, 21, and 6, we get 55. So now we have x plus 55 over 42x equals 97. We can combine these like terms for these values of x. And technically, there's a 1 in front of this one, isn't there? It's identity property. It's our buddy, the invisible 1. And we can change it to 42 over 42 to keep it as a fraction. And that way, we end up with 97 over 42x equals 97. Now, all we have to do to isolate this x is multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 97 over 42, which is the flipped around version, isn't it? It's 42 over 97. We do it on each side, and we don't even need to do the math. We know that we need to multiply 42 times 97, but we're going to do it again here, which means whatever this number is, is going to be this number, and that means it's going to equal a 1. So without even having to do any math, we know this is a 1. And on this side, when we multiply it by 42 over 97, we can see that this 97 cancels out that 97, and all we're left with is 42 over 1. So our answer is 42. See? Canceling out really helps, doesn't it? And just remember that a coefficient or a fraction coefficient is whatever is in front of that variable. And the reciprocal is the upside-down version of that fraction or that rational expression. And all we have to do to isolate a variable is to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of that rational number, that fraction. And that way we end up with 2 over 2, which is a 1, is equal to 12. See? We multiply each side of the rational equation by the reciprocal of that coefficient, and it isolates the variable. All right? Our next video, number 11.1a, we're going to talk about radical expressions. Now, th throughout the whole chapter 10, we've been talking about rational expressions, fractions, decimals. Now we're going to talk about radical expressions and equations. We're going to talk about square roots. And of course, like always, if you want to go to the, any of the links in chapter 10 that we talked about, the proofs, the theorems, working backwards strategy, 
And there'll be a link to my algebra word problem playlist. Just click on the description of this video. All right. And remember that you can give me a one-time support by going to my homepage. And there's a link in this description for that. And you can click on the support button and give a dollar or two. Or you can become a regular patron on Patreon.com. I'd really appreciate it. And so would my little puppies. It would help us survive. All right. I'll see you next video. I hope you're doing well. Bye.